Hello, Christine Faith here with Right to Thrive. Today we have a very important topic to discuss, and it's a sensitive topic. It's not a topic that um, I have all the answers to by any means, um, but it's a conversation that we need to have, and it's a conversation that needs to continue. So the topic for today is all about food, um, and I know that's sort of uh, largely writ, but let me get a little bit more specific. It's about where our calories come from and about the impacts of those calories um, that are in our diet and those impacts across the landscape. So um, let's talk for just a second about the different types of calories that make their way into our diet. We have fat calories, we have protein calories, and we have carbohydrate calories. The fats are obviously the densest calorically. Uh, carbohydrates are next and um, then proteins, especially lean proteins, um, sort of round that out. Most fruits and vegetables are considered a combination of um, carbohydrates and some even have a little bit of fat. So they're a combina combination of carbohydrates and fat. And then um, most of our meat products are considered a combination of fats and proteins. Our grains are um, near pure carbohydrate. A lot of our fruits are um, pretty close to pure carbohydrates as well. Um, bananas, for instance, are a fruit that um, actually have fat in them. So they're, a, they're the highest fat fruit um, that there is. So uh, lots of combination variation, but those are the three, um, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. And there's a lot of debate about uh, which of those caloric forms has the least amount of impact on the planet. Um, and you'll see everything from um, folks that eat paleo um, to your typical omnivore, to vegetarians, um, to vegans. So we have a range of, of what folks eat uh, and why they eat it and um, that impact on the planet. So let's talk about some of the different um, impacts that we're seeing right now from our food system. Um, we're seeing topsoil loss at 10 times the rate that topsoil can be created. We're seeing um, loss of fresh water. And I know that sounds like it's not possible, like how do we lose fresh water? Um, the planet has been storing fresh water underground in aquifers for millions of years. And that water is being pumped out um, at a rate much, much faster than the aquifers can refill. And so th those aquifers drop a little bit every year. That's been going on for about 100 years in the Midwest. So we're actually running out of fresh water because our capacity um, to store it is being reduced because we can't get it back into the aquifer as fast as we need to pull it out. Um, we're looking at nitrate poisonings from um, animal factories. Um, there's the sludge that comes out of a, an animal factory, a high density feedlot, is essentially toxic waste. Um, so we're seeing those impacts on the planet. And then of course, um, any type of fruit, vegetable, or grain, we're seeing um, GMOs and pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. Um, and of course, those toxic cocktails are having um, impacts on our health as well as impacts across um, the, the animal kingdom. Um, honeybees are a great example of that. They are succumbing to the, to the toxic mix that comes out of agriculture. So then the question remains, um, where do we get our calories and, and how do we reduce our impact on the planet? And there's great debate about this. There's not a lot of clear answers right now. Uh, we know that local is really good. Um, however, local has a hard time standing up to food that's transported if um, the food that was grown somewhere else did not need climate control to make it grow. So let me explain. So if you're growing tomatoes in Colorado, or if you're importing tomatoes from Southern California, ironically, in many cases, the tomatoes coming out of California will have less of a carbon footprint than the tomatoes grown locally because we have to three season um, our tomatoes to get them to grow. So if you're gonna have a tomato in December, um, if you were to grow it here, you would actually put more fossil fuel um, into that tomato than if you just put it on a truck and shipped it from somewhere where it could just be grown um, out of doors. So um, local is good. Local and in season is um, even better. Um, meat products are getting um, a lot of attention right now because of the high concentrations of nitrates and other problems. Um, pastured meats and pastured eggs, pastured dairy, those types of things are being looked at as possibly um, the most sustainable. Um, and we'll talk about why that is in just a minute because I know that doesn't sound right, but they are possibly the most sustainable at this point. Uh, Grain-based diets and plant-based plant diets um, 
very ethically high on the list because there's no harm to um, domesticated animals. Um, those fields though um, were habitat, so uh, we did lose wildlife habitat when um, we converted something to say uh, a wheat field, for instance. And the biggest problem with grains is that the production of grains is 100% fossil fuel dependent. So if a diet um, is based on grains um, and plants that are picked and planted through a mechanized method, um, it's a very fossil fuel intensive diet and the carbon footprint is actually very high. So again, this idea that, that that possibly pastured, um, not grain fed, because then we're back to the field with the combines and the plows, but pastured um, is, is shaping up to be something to look at. Um, and there's also some evidence that um, animals on pasture restore soil health and bring balance back to the, to the ecosystems. So lots of questions. Not a lot of good answers. Um, personally, I try to limit um, any meats that um, I eat in um, restaurants or, or when I'm out and about because I can't verify that they were sustainably raised or humanely raised or pastured. Um, so meat is very tricky if you're an omnivore um, or a, a paleo person. Um, grains, if we're producing our own grains in our backyard, we can see very quickly how much energy it takes and how much space it takes to produce grains. Um, and so those are harder to support as sustainable. And our diet is, in this nation, is so grain-based. We have, um, you know, bona fide wheat addictions um, where we consume grains um, sort of nonstop. Um, so this is sort of the, uh, the opening shot, if you will, um, the, uh, the beginning of the conversation to start looking at um, ways that we can adjust what we eat um, and maybe reduce our impact on the planet. Most of us are backyard gardeners, uh, a lot of us are backyard farmers, and those of us that grow know that it is ridiculous to believe that we can grow all of the food our household needs in our backyards. We know better. We've seen the, the calorie density per square foot that's coming out of our backyards. Um, even the folks um, in California, the little homestead in the city down in Pasadena that claim that they grow all of their food on their homestead, they actually don't. Um, they take their goats off of the homestead and they graze them out in public parks because they don't have the space to support the goats um, to produce the milk and cheese. And the milk and cheese are so calorically dense, they're critical to their diet. They, they would not be able to live on just the vegetables and fruits that they grow. Um, so lots of questions, not a lot of answers. Um, a discussion we need to keep having. I really am um, hoping for lots of comments and feedback on this. Um, things that you've read, things that you've experienced, um, ideas that you might have. Um, this is the, uh, the future problem that we have to deal with. As fossil fuel prices continue to rise, um, the ability to produce cheap grains is going to go by the wayside, um, not to mention some of the health problems associated with a high grain diet. Um, the ability to transport food is going to become more difficult. The ability to um, three season food, to heat a greenhouse, or even to build a greenhouse out of plastic uh, with the price of petroleum continuing to rise. Um, all issues that need to be addressed. So, I'm um, very curious, um, hopeful for um, lots of comments and a, and a real feisty dialogue on this. I'd love to hear what you have to say um, and let's see what we can't come up with. Thanks so much.